Right, so for those of you debating whether you should upgrade from the iPad Air 4 to the iPad Air 5, or deciding whether you should buy the iPad Air 4 or the 5, I thought I'd make this comparison video for you guys, and spoiler alert, these are very similar products. And so let's delve into it, but first make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumours, and with that being said, let's just talk in. So beginning with the design of these iPads, they're basically the same. In fact, if you don't have one of the new colors for the iPad Air 5, this looks near identical to the iPad Air 4. In fact, the only change I could see is iPad Air's written on the back of the iPad Air 5, whereas on the iPad Air 4, it just says iPad. In fact, Apple's been so lazy with this design, they could not be asked to put the flash on the back of the iPad Mini 6 on the iPad Air 5, since that would require retooling and that would include increase the cost of building this iPad and Timothy does not want that, he wants to maximize profits and so yeah they're basically recycling the design. Actually I forgot to mention but they've made it worse with the iPad Air 5 because they're using thinner aluminium with the new iPads and so now this iPad creaks, it feels way more fragile and so yes if anything this is kind of a downgrade. But hey hopefully that's only an issue with the first batch and the build quality does get a lot better as production continues for this new iPad. Anyways, moving on to the display, this is also going to be a pretty short segment since the displays on these iPads are also identical. So yeah, the same 10.5 inch liquid retina display on the front, same exact resolution, same 60Hz refresh rate, same brightness, same pretty much everything. So yeah, if you're looking for an upgrade from the display on the iPad Air 4, you're not getting that with the iPad Air 5. Now coming to actual upgrades, we do have the chips in these iPads. We have the A14 in the iPad Air 4 and the M1 chip in the iPad Air 5. And obviously because of the M1 we see an increase to 8GB of RAM with the iPad Air 5, that's a pretty sizable increase over 4 gigs of RAM we saw with the iPad Air 4. Now yes, on paper this does seem like a pretty massive improvement and the benchmarks are a lot better on paper but do remember that like we complained with the M1 iPad Pros, M1 is being wasted on iPad OS. Since right now, at the time of filming, the M1 really has no exclusive features that take advantage of its power, and so as a result, while the performance is much better with the M1 chip, you're really not benefiting from that. In fact, doing iPad things for the most part, A14 and M1 are pretty much the same, so yes, for most consumers, you do not need the extra performance the M1 offers. However, there are a few niche cases, for example Procreate does take advantage of the additional RAM the M1 has, and so artists who care about having layers with the artwork, they might need the M1 chip. But 95% of consumers don't need the additional performance right now at the time of filming and that's the main thing to note because there's been rumours M1 exclusive features could come to iPadOS 16, we could see floating windows, maybe Final Cut, but those are rumours at the end of the day so don't buy the iPad F5 based on those tidbits. If anything, wait until DubDub to see if the M1 is going to be properly utilised with iPadOS. Now moving to battery life, this is basically the same across all iPads. Apple says 10 hours of use and I always match those stats with my iPads. So yes, no battery life upgrades with the iPad Air 5. Now I guess there is one positive with the design staying the same and that is for those upgrading you can use the same accessories you had with the last iPad Air. So Apple Pencil 2 support and also smart and magic keyboard support. Now moving to the cameras, the rear cameras are identical on these iPads, they're fine for iPad things, nothing that amazing, but of course the big change is on the front, we have center stage on the new iPad Air 5, and I have to admit, this is pretty nice. So yeah, not only is this a much wider sensor, but of course, with the magic of center stage, the iPad follows you around when doing video calls. And so yes, for those using apps like Zoom and FaceTime a lot, you would see a pretty big upgrade with the iPad Air 5's camera on the front. So this is a quick test of the front-facing camera with the iPad Air 5. 
and also the mic quality, so tell me how it is in the comments below. And here's the same test on the iPad Air 4, so tell me how the mic quality is in the comments below. And for those curious, here's a quick mic test with the back camera on the iPad Air 5. And now the same thing on the iPad Air 4. Anyways, moving on to some final tidbits. Speakers are identical with these iPads. I don't see a difference. And yeah, they're still inferior to the Pro models due to the fact they're not quad speakers like the holes might suggest. But first, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And with that being said, let's just talk in. But first, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And with that being said, let's just talk in. Now, the Touch ID scanner on the side is identical between these two iPads. And yeah, I do prefer this to Face ID because often with the iPad Pro, I would block the Face ID sensors on the front when holding the iPad. And so yes, I do find Touch ID way more convenient. Now in terms of connectivity, we have Wi-Fi 6 and also Bluetooth 5.0 on both iPads. But you do get sub 6 5G with the cellular versions of the iPad Air 5. So for those who care about that, that's something the Air 5 only supports. But to be honest, I don't count that as a major upgrade because it's the sub 6 version of 5G and that's barely faster than 4G in most areas. And so yes, I don't see why someone would upgrade for that. Anyways, we have USB-C on both iPads, but the transfer speeds are slightly faster with the Air 5. Now this is not Thunderbolt, but it is a pretty nice improvement over the Air 4, so you could upgrade for that. Now let's get to the key part, and that is pricing and storage for these iPads. So of course, the Air 5 unfortunately starts with 64 gigs of storage, now, to be honest, I can manage with that, but 128 gigs of storage would have been nice for the price. And what's worse is that Apple charges $150 more for 256. And so, yeah, that's a pretty expensive upgrade. And that's where the iPad Air 4 could become a good deal because I'm seeing discounts of $100 from most retailers. And do remember, this is discounts a few days after the iPad Air 5's release. And so I'm sure these discounts are going to get better in the coming weeks. But even right now, $100 less for the 64 gig and 256 gig versions of the iPad Air 4 is a pretty good deal because these iPads are very similar for the most part and you can put the $100 saving towards an accessory for this iPad like a new pencil or keyboard. CS, while to most of you guys, a difference of $100 might not seem like much, I do think you're better off getting the Air 4 and some accessories compared to the iPad Air 5. And for those wondering whether it's worth upgrading, I would not. These iPads are practically the same, and if you're looking for proper upgrades, I would wait for the 2022 iPad Pros to launch. So yes, hopefully that helps guys, but tell me in the comments below, do you plan to buy the Air 4 or the Air 5? Or if you do own the iPad Air 4, do you plan to upgrade? Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video above on details regarding Apple's VR headset. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya peeps.